Hi, Ryan from A&B here. Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Pivot Shuttle. Back in 2018 when we first reviewed the Pivot Shuttle, it was 27.5 plus. Now the 2022 model is 29 inch front and rear. It retains the 160mm front and the 140mm rear, but it does have some significant changes to the geometry and the way it handles. Pivot are offering one model, which is the model we have here, the Team XTR, it's $16,500, which represents really, really good value when compared to some of the other e-bikes we're seeing at the moment. Let's take a closer look at the motor and battery. Pivot have gone all out and spec'd the new Pivot Shuttle with a 726 watt hour Daffron battery, which is ginormous. It, it is quite significantly bigger than say Shimano's 630 watt hour battery, but they've packed it into a smaller package, which is a little bit shorter as well. So it'll keep the weight a little bit further down uh, towards the bottom bracket shell. Has a really nice, neat charge port here, which actually screws into the frame, so it can't get yanked out when you're charging. Uh, and a nice little on off button on the other side, which is also part of the cable port. So nice and neat, no additional holes in the frame and no access for water to get into the frame through those ports. The 726 watt hour battery is absolutely ginormous. It's bigger than the biggest battery that we've had on test in the Specialized Levo, which was 700 watt hour. And we've been consistently being able to get over 2000 meters of climbing to a charge. So about 2150 um, or a little bit over a thousand meters um, for halfway. It is a little bit tricky to check how much battery uh, you've got remaining. With the Shimano step system, the display only gives you five bars, so it doesn't give you a percentage readout. So, you know, do you have 80% left or do you have 69% left? It can be a little bit vague, but with this battery, there is so much battery available that it almost doesn't matter. It's really gonna be a good couple of hours of riding before it's flat anyway. Um, but it would be nice to see an update from Shimano that allows maybe a percentage of charge remaining rather than one bar. The updated EP8 motor goes from 75 newton meters of torque up to 85 newton meters of torque, which is noticeable. On climbs, sustained climbs and techie climbs, it really feels more comfortable sitting in that sort of nice uh, cadence, you know, the 75 to 85 rather than, you know, pushing up to 100. Uh, so a lot nicer there. The motor itself also drops down in weight down to about 2.6 kilos uh, and it's a lot smaller as well. Like all Shimano systems, there are three modes available. Eco, which will give you huge range on this bike, you know, over 200 Ks. Uh, in boost mode, looking at about 75 kilometers. Uh, it's obviously very general, um, but the mode you'll probably spend most of your time in is the trail mode. The one thing to mention with the new EP8 motor is it is noisier than its predecessor. When you are coasting, you don't feel any drag. It's really, really nice, but that clutch system is quite noisy. So let's take a closer look at the components on the 2022 Pivot Shuttle. Pivot have done a beautiful job specking this bike. It has Fox factory suspension and dropper post throughout. It has the new 38 up front with a Grip 2 damper, which is really, really nice. The DPX2, it's gone to a metric sizing from Imperial. And what it looks like Pivot has done is changed this upper link and squeezed a slightly longer shock into the bike. So we have a size large on review here. It is spec'd with a 150mm transfer dropper. The seat tube itself is actually quite tall, which means they've gone with a 150, which will suit most riders. Shimano XTR has been used throughout. The new 12 speed system has huge range, it offers 10 through to 51 teeth on the rear cassette and a nice quality steel chainring on front, which means the system will be very durable. Shifting under load with the Shimano 12 speed system is very, very good. It doesn't seem to mind going up and down the cassette under high load, and it's a really, really nice pairing for this bike. The XTR four pot brakes are very, very powerful. However, 
Pivot have used a 180 mil rear rotor with a 29 inch wheel and a 200 mil up the front. On long descents, they do get very, very hot and do begin to fade a little bit. It's worth noting that Pivot has spec this bike with XO Plus casing tires. There's a 2.5 up the front and the maximum size that can be used on this bike is a 2.4 29er tire on the rear. Any bigger than that and you may run into clearance issues. The shuttle's predecessor was based around a 65 degree head angle and 27 5 plus wheels. It did have a slightly lower bottom bracket and now with the additional 29 inch wheels the bike does sit a little bit higher. So what Pivot have done to compensate for this is they've designed a slightly different alloy link. They've put in a metric shock, which is a little bit longer. It does make the rear end of the bike a little bit longer to accommodate the rear wheels. It takes it from 438 mils out to 441 mils, which is still very, very short for a 29 inch rear end. It also rakes the head angle out to 64.3, which makes it a little bit more modern and a little bit more capable on those faster hard hitting descents as well. So it does bring the bottom bracket height down to 35.8, uh, which is a little bit lower than it was last year with the 29 inch wheels as well. Um, but it is still considerably higher than the 27.5. Could this be run as a mullet with a 27.5 rear end? I think it would work quite well. It would change the seat tube angle considerably, but I think it would complement this bike well and make it a little bit uh, easier to maneuver and certainly get the bottom bracket height down. The seat tube angle is a claim 74 degrees, which is the virtual measurement, but when we've checked it, it's actually 69 degrees, which you can see it is actually a little bit laid back, maybe more than some that we've tested recently. These slightly more relaxed and revised angles do relate nicely on the trail. It is very capable and the DW link is really, really smooth underfoot. There is only 140 mils of travel, but it does work quite nicely and it is a little bit more progressive than its predecessor. So let's get the shuttle onto the trail and see what it can do. The DW link has always been an efficient climber. I've rarely used uh, the climb mode or trail mode on this bike. Even pedaling hard out of the saddle with the addition of the motor, it climbs really, really well. Um, on long fire road climbs, sitting it in you know, the climb mode is nice. It keeps it a little bit higher, but it's so efficient anyway, I rarely use it. The shuttle rolls really, really nicely over terrain. It sits quite planted. However, you are a little bit higher up on this frame than you would on some others the higher standover but the slightly longer wheelbase at 1235 for the size large is really nice and stable at speed. The slacker 64.3 degree head angle enables you to charge sections with ease and the slightly longer wheelbase allows you to plow straight through them really really nicely with a very active DW link rear end. Thanks for watching make sure to like and subscribe see you next time.